Hey folks, and welcome to a brand new iceberg video. Oh man, don't tell me. You can free up space on this iPhone storage. You can not now. Settings, not now. But my trigger, my lock, my trick, card favor, set my trigger, my lock, finish recording, button. Oh well, that's good, since I can probably do a recording. Um just not make it too long so this is the heavy metal iceberg explained um and we're literally going to do uh tier one to tier three in this video and then there'll be a tier four to tier six so um yeah so in this video we're just going to do the uh the, the three tiers of the of the metal phase. Um, so obviously, um, in the first tier, we're gonna we're gonna start off something light. We're just gonna start with pure heavy metal as it stands. Um, so um, you know, just pure normal metal to start off with. So I'm going to talk, first of all, um, Iron Maiden. They were a band that kind of kicked off, um, not heavy metal as we know it, but kind of metal, this kind of pure metal, obviously. Um, Bruce Dickinson kind of took it more into a metal vibe than a punk vibe. I mean, they were supposed to be this uh, neon punk there is um, rumours that Iron Maiden was going to be a progressive punk band. But unfortunately, um, they wanted to become something more than a progressive punk. Uh, which is, I'm glad they did because um, Iron Maiden, uh, if it wasn't for them, there's just so many bands that wouldn't have been what they are without Iron Maiden. Um, definitely. Um, the next band, of course, is um, Black Sabbath. <laughs> now, you, you, you can't do a, a, a metal iceberg without talking about Sabbath, you know? They kicked off metal. They created heavy metal, as we know and love it today. Um, they didn't create thrash metal. They just created heavy metal because they went from hard rock to heavy metal. Um, because obviously the press, um, it started off where the press were labeling Sabbath as a heavy metal band. They were a hard rock band, but then it went on. Um, I think there is, um, an alleged rumor. I'm not entirely sure where, um, Sharon Osbourne's, uh, manager, father, whatever. One notification. Um, no. just basically said, no, Sabbath are metal. Be gone with it, you know. Uh, Sabbath are metal. Um, so, yeah. The next band on my list is uh, Uriah Heap. Now, Uriah Heap aren't necessarily metal, but they are on the fringes of metal. Um, can I just say that I've left bands like Led Zeppelin... Um, Iron Butterfly and all the other stuff out of this list because they are not metal. Um, it's important that we do mention them, but they're not metal. So that's all I'll say. You know, Led Zeppelin being more of a softer rock band. Um, you know, yes, they paved the way, but they're not metal. <laughs> um... So, yeah, you're right, Heap. Um, they kind of opened the door to a lot of folk metal bands because they weren't really a rock band. Um, it's just when they started doing some heavy stuff, you know, some loud stuff, they then went and did that band uh, music. But... Um, I guess, you know, 
yeah. Um, so moving on to the next band, which is um, Motorhead. Can't really do, a, a, and again, you can't really do a heavy metal iceberg without mentioning Motorhead. Motorhead were literally famous for playing fast and loud. Um, it was just rock and roll, but of course the press weren't happy with just rock and roll, were they? They wanted heavy, hard-hitting, loud music. Um, and somebody with a raucous voice. A little bit melodic, you know, you can see where Dave Growl got his um, melodic kind of vocal from. You can see there's a bit of Lemmy in Dave Grohl. Um, Metallica, definitely. A lot of, lot of modes head in Metallica. Um, but that's where it is, boys and girls. That's kind of where metal carries on, I guess. Carries on and on. And lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's fast, loud. And... Of course, Lemmy's like a... No-nonsense person when it comes to... Rock and roll, or metal, at least. Now, I do have some heavier bands for Tier 1. Not extreme bands just yet, but I do have some heavy bands. Um, so I want to get all the hair metal shit out of the way. Um, you know, bands like Motley Crue, stop being a hair metal band. Um, I don't know, it's sort of like bubblegum metal bands which popped up in the 80s and went very, very quickly. Because um, hair metal was pretty shit, um, to be honest. Um, like the power ballad came out of the hair metal scene it's like everybody was chasing girls uh, then they did drugs and shots and then they got fucked up and did power ballads <laughs> kind of that's the whole principle um so, uh, here's all heavy metal. Oh, I've missed out one really good metal band, which is Kiss. Uh, fucking good metal band, obviously. Um, and I've also missed out Alice Cooper. Um, Alice Cooper being a glam rock artist, but being very theatrical. And uh, he taught the goths, Alice Cooper. So... Um, if you are not a goth and you like Alice Cooper, then don't diss goths. That's my uh, opinion on that. I mean, kind of um, Danny Filth. A lot of what Danny Filth does is kind of very Alice Cooperish kind of thing. Yeah, more on a extreme measure, but you can see like um, Alice Cooper was like. Uh, the fucking, uh, I am a rock star, I will, um, I will basically destroy your parent's hood and you will be this whatever. <laughs> um, and back then it was very goofy compared to all the extreme stuff that you will see and hear. Um, actually, you'll hear about not see. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, you know, um, people at this goths kind of got to remember where it's all come from. Um, Alice Cooper was, uh, he kind of invented the shock rock genre. Um, along with people like Gigi Allen, who uh, was, 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 shock was, um, 
a, a bit of an overstatement, you know, when it came to people like Gigi. But he had a point. Um, you know, not his heroin overdose, because that's pretty sad. But it's pretty artistic, the whole thing. You know, he... Um, he wanted to screw up his audience. Um, but his interviews are very kind of far out. Um, he was a punk rocker, but he kind of... Um, the, you know, shooting heroin is not cool. But... Kind of... I don't know, kind of... Um, making your audience squirm has a big thing to say. It's like, Gigi Allen's point was, if you're going to go and see music, you are going to get screwed up as well. But I don't want to talk about Gigi Allen too much, but I just thought I might as well. <laughs> it's talking shock rock. You know, we're talking Alice Cooper. I mean, Alice Cooper was like bad hairstyles and, um, you know, if you had your hair this long and it was like, Corpse paint and everything, but it did lead did lead to um, very extreme bands, um, which you know it's very important to mention all these extreme bands that came out the woodwork, the woodwork. Anyway, um, that's kind of, you know. Two notifications, 6.49 p.m. Anyway, I'm moving on because I kind of want to get some, uh, some other bands, like, um, I want to talk about some other bands in the, um, in the pipeline that need talking about, so... I'm going to talk about them. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I'm going to mention Death Leopard, an amazing band from Sheffield. Now, they technically weren't a hair metal band. They were an 80s metal band. Um, but my word, they were like... They were just amazing. The, the the people that um like Death Leopard were just like um they sort of like pop metal, if you will. Um But it's cool because they were from Sheffield and I think Sheffield has its own... It's from the north. And it's just kind of... You know, like... People like Motorhead and Sabbath were from Birmingham. So the Birmingham had its doom and gloom, whereas... I don't know, there was something uplifting about Sheffield, but it was kind of... There was something dark about it, you know? There was something dark about... Sheffield that it just undertoned everything that was meant to happen but there were some amazing freaking guitar riffs in that um, in that uh, in that niche now speaking about bands in the northeast, I did forget to mention uh, get to mention Death Southern Cult. They will come back up on this list as um, the Cult and uh, the Southern Cult, the Cult or Cult. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up now is because they were a 
punk band originally. So these, uh, this was a band that came up from the roots of punk. They came from punk roots, but they also came from new wave roots too. Um, so new wave was like when synths, like guitars were taking a back seat and synths were taking a front seat in the eighties. Um, now, if you think, well, synths have been going around for a while. Yes, but nobody could afford synths in the 60s or 70s. You had to be the Beatles um, to have a synth. They were that um, expensive. You know, people built their own synths. They knew a lot about electronics to build. Um, since, but they were like this sort of shitty style phone sounding uh, thing, but they were around and they were you know, these god awful things that people built. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the metals got pissed off with the synths. Um, there was a time when, yeah, metals did get pissed off with, with too much keyboard, and that was happening in the 80s. Too much was too much. I mean, you think now, synth, yeah, it's pretty cool, but back then, it was too much. Um, it was all you heard. I mean, if you hear a lot of 80s music, um, listen very closely to how many synth lines or hooks there is. And uh, if you can imagine living in that era, thinking, holy shit, is this all we're hearing is since that and since the other um so um death southern cult came out and they were so heavy they were too heavy for goths originally but um they um you know they were nitty and they were gritty and they were good um you know so they were a pretty good band <laughs> a, you know uh which is important. You must be good. Um, if you are a shit band, nobody is going to listen to you. Um, okay, so the next band on my list happens to be Metallica. And Metallica is um, a thrash metal band, one of the big four. All of the big four are on this list. Um... Not in this tier exactly, uh, but they are in they are in this iceberg. So, um, you know, we have to mention them all and talk about them all. But yeah, Metallica being the big four and uh, taking the lead upon things, taking the helm. Um, you know, especially with an album like Metal Up Your Ass <laughs> or Kill Them All. Um, but apparently, it has come out. Um, to a lot of documentaries, but a lot of Metallica, a lot of Metallica fans, or people that like Metallica, will just scream "metal up your ass" till you're blue in the face. Because um, yeah, that was the original name. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's a funny kind of. Um, back then, it, it's like a massive joke that they were going to call it album. Metal up your ass, but um, I think kill them all is like it's like metal up your ass, kill them all. I think kill them all kind of I don't know. Um, I heard lots of amazing rumors about that. Like the kill them all has the has the um, I don't know. There's like a metal up your ass and tiny writing on stuff. Like I don't know, but and Metallica were pretty up in front about it live, so. People kind of knew that the album had a change. But I think um, the vinyl, there is a vinyl somewhere um, with the metal up your ass on the cover. Um, it's very rare to find it, but there probably is. I think I've heard there is um, a metal up your ass album cover somewhere. Um, if you have it, hold on to it. It'll be worth a lot of money in years to come. Um, but, you know... 
Metallica, even though they've gone down several different routes, um, which, you know, uh, they won't be coming up again on this iceberg, so... But they've gone kind of, you know, um, as I've spoke about the top six Metallica albums and I've mentioned that Metallica have been pushed by the record company so many times. And, you know, it's sad to know that, yeah, they lost Cliff. So doing another album straight after that was going to be difficult for them. But, and Justice for All, with it being a great sounding album to me, um, things weren't really great sounding in the studio to a band. It's not only did they lose a member from the band, but they, the bass player they got um, next, uh, kind of, they, they didn't really want to give him an easy time. And the bass player didn't really want to give Metallica an easy time. But it was like they disconnected him from the band. Um, yeah, it's... There's a lot of stuff about that, but... Um, anyway. So... Anyway, moving on from Metallica because we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, is another band called Extreme. This is the only prog metal band that I'll have on my list because a lot of the early stuff was kind of leading to thrash. Um, they were a 90s band, but... Um, yeah. Now, as a few other bands I'm going to discuss right here now. Guns and Roses. Um, how can I talk about this band? You know, they were a good band when they started out. You know, they did like a few really great albums. But it's when the band went to pieces. I mean, I'm so glad that Steve Atlow went because he was a total uh, piece of shit, you know. Um, he did drugs most of the time and wasn't with the band most of the time. So what does that tell you? Um, you know, the drummer they brought in after was pretty good and they did some really good stuff. Um, they even did a great concept video, November Rain, but the song was also kind of... I don't know if it was trying to be sort of... Uh, a Led Zeppelin song and a Beatles song combined. Um, but they did throw out some anthems. You know, a band that could spit out anthems, make thousands of dollars, um, have massive film crews, do epic videos. Ah, there's so much to say about this band. You know, there really, really is. Um, there's so many stories to tell. It's like a lot has unfolded with Guns N' Roses over the years. Stuff that not a lot of bands could. I mean... Most bands have had to pull it off. But that's, you know, but that's because they've had to, not because they wish to. And so, yeah. Oh, by the way, I was just going to say that I've done this iceberg completely unscripted, very like the last one, except I had to script the last part of it because some of the bands that I was talking about on the last part of it. But this band, uh, this is like explaining also putting my thoughts and feelings into this iceberg too the money talks doesn't it <laughs> you know um obviously uh 
Rick Rubin loved Sweet Caroline that much that they had to redo it. But anyway, um, yeah, so Rick Rubin is going to get a stab each time I talk about a band that he's produced. I mean, come on. Um, You know. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention he even reinvented Metallica. I mean, come on. I mean, that just gets even bad. I mean, Metallica weren't even reinvented when they did that album. There was too many effing solos on the thing. I mean, Death Magnetic was a really good album, but again, there was just, there was just places where, you know, it was just too sort of overdone. It was like, you know when you put a steak in the oven and yeah, you, you, you want a steak fully done, but you just don't want it that much overdone? Well, they did that. I mean, how many guitar solos could they put on an album? How many guitar solos? Oh, and by the way, as for Sabbath's 13 album, which was a pretty good album, but it still sounds like the Heaven and Hell album to me. To me, it does. To me, it sounds like they, they've kept with the Heaven and Hell sound, but they've just brought Ozzy back. I mean... For a lot of Sabbath fans, that was great. I mean, reading about 13 and hearing all about it was great. But I don't know. And there were issues with the tour, but that's got nothing to do with Rick. God bless him. Anyway, um, back to the iceberg. <laughs> you know. Oh, by the way, um, me and a friend, we do have a good rant about Ruben all the time. So big shout to Nose Bruiser. Um, he, we, me and him, we do go on about Ruben a hell of a lot, especially when there's an album that we just think, oh my gosh, it's just been overdone. It's just been like overdone too much, too much to death. I mean, technically the Metallica Death Magnetic album, it was good on like, a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, second, uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, whatever. Listen, but then when it got to the point where I thought, "Oh, hold on, what's going on?" You know, too many guitar solos. Like, look, there's a guitar solo here, and there's a guitar solo here, and there's a guitar solo here. And there's a guitar solo here. And there is a solo where it shouldn't be. And there's another solo where it shouldn't be. Like, there were solos in the intro. There were solos near the outro. There were solos in the verses. There were solos in the chorus. There were solos everywhere, man. I mean, seriously, right? Okay. I could see this album was like, apology to the fans. Okay. I'm sorry, fans. We didn't do enough guitar solos. Well, here they are. Rick Rubin said, we need to do guitar solos. Yeah, not that much. I mean, yes, Metallica were all about guitar solos, but in the right places, in the right places. And also, Metallica weren't originally pushed to do guitar solos. So when, you know, albums like St. Anger came out, it would have been nice to have a little solo here and there, but I don't know. And plus, they were pushed to do that album. You know, when you push someone to do an album, they do an album. But if it's going to sound good or not is my point of opinion. Anyway, that's a stab at producers, not a stab at the band. Oh, yeah, and a stab at record labels, too. <laughs> we'll be talking about that as well. Um so, yeah, because, of course, censoring your material is also important. So, yeah. But back to Slayer. I mean, Slayer were like this punishing band. Um, they're not that punishing, though. The lyrics are not for the faint of hearted. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> um but it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, seriously, um, there was a lot of blood on Raining Blood. There was blood. There was Satan. There was serial killers. There was 
people being thrown to hell? I guess that is kind of the ingredients that you really want. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. And, of course, um, Slayer, even though they sing about satanic stuff, they're not really the most extreme band, band that um, is on this iceberg. So, yeah, just because you sing about Satan doesn't really make you an extreme band. Um, I mean, that's what I think. I know a lot of Christian communities got pissed off just by them, you know, bands singing about the devil. Uh, does that mean you're worshipping the devil? I don't know, and I don't really give a shit. Anyway, um... Yeah, so speaking about really not giving a shit for the next band, um, I am going to go from um, Slayer to Testament. Now, Testament, again, are a bit more of a punishing band. Um, they're like... Oh my goodness, they are fucking... They don't give a shit to whoever hears their music. They're like, whoa, man, they're like balls to the wall. They were supposed to be like one of the big four, I believe, but they never made it. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure why they never made it, but anyway, anyway... um. The next band on the list is um, Anthrax. Now, Anthrax are like hip-hop metal, but they do, you know, they play pretty heavy. Um, and, yeah, they didn't invent new metal, but... Um, the next band, which did, which is Helmet. Um, Helmet were very responsible for that heavy metal riff, which a lot of bands use. Corn, Slipknot, everybody uses that riff. So, yeah. Um, and I might as well talk about Slipknot very briefly. Slipknot were a band that wore masks and just kind of real, you know, people, like, a lot of kids everywhere. Um, I believe, like, Slipknot was banned from a lot of schools, a lot of high schools. Uh, Slipknot, you know, their music is really, really cool. Um, their artwork is really cool. Just everything about them is really cool. Uh, Joey Jordison's voice is, like, most epic thing you'll ever hear. Um, and his lyrics. And the band's just like that. The Slipknot's like. I don't know. They, they took things like they took things from other places. And <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of shit in the band, drugs, alcohol, sex, a lot, but still, they're a great band nonetheless. Um, okay, I think it's about time at this moment that I do mention in tier two, um, very briefly about uh, Sepultura, which are a great band. Um, this Human Fly, um, and there's another band that's really like um, Sepultura, but... Um, the musicianship in that band is just epic. Um, it's just really, really great. Um, 
Another metal band, which I'm going to mention very briefly, is Tool. Tool are a progressive metal band. Um, they kind of take things on a different turn. Um, they were going to be on the new Led Zeppelin at one point. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Right. Now on to tier three. And we are going to mention some extreme bands for tier three. So get ready. Um, so in tier three, I'm going to start things off with Venom. Venom being the first extreme metal band in the very late 80s. Um, a lot of people, you know, Motorhead, yeah. The, 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 the vocals in Motorhead were melodic, whereas the vocals in Venom aren't melodic at all. <clears throat> but these guys kind of turn things on its head, they turn punk rock on its head. They turned even just heavy metal on its head. And these guys were in for, for giving their audience a ride, which, you know, I mean, things were still kind of, you know, people didn't know what they knew. So kind of, um, you know, it was very difficult to find some really disturbing records out there. So I guess, you know, this band kind of, you know, yeah, they went all out, um, you know, they were all out with the Hail Satan thing and everything, but it was still goofy, goofy. It wasn't, you know, it was kind of, you know, they only went out knowing what they knew. They didn't know everything, but they wanted to really give, they wanted to really turn things to the extreme. So... They did, they did turn things up a notch. And speaking of turning things up a notch, um, we're going to talk about Cradle of Filth ever so briefly because the band Cradle of Filth go very theatrical with what they do. I mean, if you're into Alice Cooper, you should be into Cradle of Filth with all its theatricals. Um, it's all fictional. Um, they're not really into what they're into. They just do what they do because they are into that sort of literature. So it's really, really cool. Um, Danny Filth is actually a romantic kind of poet kind of guy. He is also a freaking great actor. Um, so, you know, he's kind of a sweet guy but he's fucking scary um so that's all to say about Danny Filth um okay the the next band is uh Emperor Emperor are you know one of the most probably again um they are you know extreme metal band but I don't know they've they've kind of the corners have been sanded off a little bit. I like to use that phrase. Uh, because, you know, their, uh, their music's kind of... I don't know, it's progressive, it's theatrical, it's... You know. Mike Mike Hawk. 